Hello everyone and welcome back to another video tutorial. In this tutorial, I'll be showing again how to take body measurements to draft a basic body. These measurements are for another drafting method, an advanced method. In my previous drafting videos, I showed how to properly take body measurements and how to apply those measurements into drafting a basic body using a simplified drafting method. Although body measurements diagrams are helpful in taking body measurements, I believe that demonstrating how to do it on a real person is much more helpful. This video tutorial is for a more advanced drafting method. Some of the measurements are the same as the previous drafting videos. Some are new. So if you see me in two different outfits, it's because I'm using old video clips from previous videos and another outfit when I'm introducing new measurements. When taking measurements, it's good advice to wear a fitted outfit and to mark some reference point as guide. It's important to mark some reference points on your body or your clients. Some reference points are God-given. Example of a God-given reference point is the shoulder tip. You can use your finger to feel for the subtle pointy point at the shoulder. The first reference point is your shoulder tip. Using your fingers, trace along your shoulder blade to the end of your shoulders. At the end of your shoulder are two tiny bones that are sticking out slightly on either side of your shoulders and those are your shoulder tip. The shoulder tip are used to measure the across shoulder length. The second reference point is the clavicle which is located at the base of your throat. Suck in your breath for a moment and you will create a hollow at the base of your throat known as the clavicle. The bottom of the clavicle is used to measure the center front length. The third and fourth reference points are the neck and neck at shoulder. These two reference points are intertwined. At the base of the neck, there is a crease that goes around the neck. This crease serves as a guideline to locating the neck at shoulder point that marks where the shoulder length begins. Once you're done with your measurements, you could just use a white paper towel to wipe off the markings on your body. Here I'm, going to, here I'm going to start marking my neckline up to my neck at shoulder. Starting at the clavicle, I marked my neckline all the way up to my neck at shoulder. And I made sure that my neck at shoulder aligns with the seam line on my shirt. If you don't have a shirt that aligns with your shoulder, you could just continue to do your markings all the way to, up, to your, up to your shoulder tip. final reference point is the nape of the back neck. With your hands placed at the bottom of the back neck, bend your neck and you should feel a bone stick out at the base of your back neck. This reference point is used to measure the center back length. Mark with an erasable marker. The first measurement you will take is your center front full length. Using a masking tape, tape the metal plate at the zero mark on your measuring tape and secure your measuring tape to your neck at shoulder point marking. Bend from side to side to find your exact waist location. Then tie a rope around your waist. Your waist is the smallest part of your torso. Then measure from your neck at shoulder to your waist. Second measurement is the center front length. With the masking tape still on the tape measure, secure the tape measure to the clavicle point mark. Place a tape across the fullest part of the bust so that your tape measure won't fall at the cave between your breasts. The cave is indicated by my finger. Make sure the adhesive tape is pulled tight across the bust. This will ensure an accurate center front measurement. Then measure from the clavicle to the waistline.
Your next measurement is the across shoulder. The across shoulder applies when drafting the center front and center back bodies. However, this measurement is best taken at the back for both the center front and center back bodies. Measure from shoulder tip to shoulder tip, then divide by two. Your next measurement is the bust arch. Measure from center front to the apex point, then to the bottom of the armhole. To accurately take the bust arch measurement, measure the distance between your apex point, divide that measurement by two, then measure from the apex point to the bottom of the armhole at the side, then add these two measurements together to get your bust arch. The rubber band which is placed above the bust is to help indicate where the underarm will be on your body. Your next measurement is the shoulder slope. Measure from shoulder tip over the bust to the waist at center front. The waist at center front is located above the belly button on your natural waistline. Tie a string around your waist to help locate your natural waistline. Hence the string tied around my waist. Next measurement is your bust depth. Measure from the shoulder tip to the bust point. Your next measurement is your shoulder length. Measure from the neck at shoulder point to the shoulder tip. Use a tape to secure your measuring tape to your shoulder at neck and measure along your shoulder to the shoulder tip. Measurement is the bust pen. Measure the distance between the apex points. Again, if measuring a client, ask them to locate their apex with their finger, then measure from nipple to nipple. The next measurement is the strap. Measure from neck at shoulder over the side of the bust along the side seam to waist at side seam. Your next measurement is the side seam. Measure from the underarm, which is the bottom of the armhole, to waist at side seam. Your next measurement is the across chest. Measure from one mid armhole to the other mid armhole. The mid armhole is the middle of the armhole, or halfway along the armhole seam. The next measurement is the front waist. Measure the front front half of the waist from side seam to side seam across the front, then divide by two. Or you could use another method in which you take your full waist circumference plus half an inch is divided by four plus a quarter inch. Use whichever method you're more comfortable with. The next measurement is the center back full length. With the tape placed on the neck at shoulder point, measure from neck at shoulder over the shoulder blade to waist. The next measurement is the center back length. Measure from the nape of the neck to the waist. The nape of the neck is the tiny bone that is located at the back of the neck. Make sure your tape measure is pulled straight down to the waist and not slanted.
The next measurement is your back waist or back waist arch measurement. Measure the back half of the waist from side seam to side seam divided by two. Or you could use a different method in which you take your full waist circumference plus half inch ease divided by four minus a quarter. Remember when we did the front, we added a quarter. Use whichever method is comfortable for you. The next measurement is the back shoulder slope. Measure from the shoulder tip over the shoulder blade to waist at center back. The next measurement is the back neck. Measure from the nape of the neck to neck at shoulder. The next measurement is the back arch. Measure from center back to the underarm, which is the bottom of the armhole at side seam. I cannot show you how to take that measurement on my body. However, I will use my dress form to show you how to locate and take the back arch measurement. Another way to take the back arch measurement is to measure from one underarm to the other underarm, then divide by two. The final measurement is the across back measurement. Measure from mid armhole to mid armhole at the back. Again, this is another measurement that I cannot show you on my body. So I will use the dress form to demonstrate how to take the across back measurement. On the dress form, the across back is taken from the middle of the armhole ridge to the other middle of the armhole ridge. The middle of the armhole ridge is at the scroll level.